As we advance in our martial arts, we often see where our weaknesses are in our style, and then we begin to realize we're going to have to cross-train in order to enhance our fighting skills. In this video, we'll give the martial artist an idea of how and when they should start cross-training. We'll talk about it. Stay tuned. Welcome to Shihan's Dojo. I'm Shihan Marty Husband and I want to talk to you today about cross training your style. Now there's many ways a person can go about doing this but this is basically just going to be a breakdown of what you need to think about when you're wanting to cross train. As a base model we'll use a process the Japanese refer to as Ikigai. This will define what and why we cross train and then we will also use the Gestalt principle to basically show how and when we should cross train. Ikigai in Japanese simply means a reason for being. According to the Japanese, everyone has Ikigai and to find it requires a deep lengthy study in the way of looking at something very important to us. The discovery of one's Ikigai will often bring satisfaction and fulfillment and meaning in your life. And in our case, it bring meaning to our martial arts. Now we will change the chart a bit here to contain the items that pertain to what we need to learn to make our martial arts complete. Starting off we'll use the term foundation to represent our base style. We will next set up a section with what we are missing. Then we will add what is required to build on both of those systems and then finally the essentials that we need to become the complete martial artist. Passion and mission will stay the same because passion is basically what you love and mission is what you're trying to accomplish and go in the direction of your martial arts. We will also add education and integration into our further understanding to see what we are trying to create for ourselves. Now let me give you a brief explanation on the Gestalt principle. Instead of using the conical form that Gestalt used to emphasize the total sum of all possibilities, I will use a mountain instead. When you climb a mountain it can be very steep and difficult and hard to traverse up. The climber will basically pick a route from the bottom of the mountain and go up to the direction of the peak. Once the climber picks the route he's going, then he'll climb that and eventually if he keeps climbing that path enough to get to the peak and he'll begin to trust that trail he has blazed up the side of the mountain. The whole goal of him is trying to get to the top of that peak. Just like the martial arts, people often see that point of mastery straight ahead and they will take a straight path towards that peak. Now in the Gestalt principle you're still going to reach the peak but as a matter of fact you're going to go around the mountain and up at an, at an angle. Let's just use climbers. They get they get to the base of the mountain and they start going up at an angle. They go around the whole mountain until they reach the peak. And once they do, they begin to see all aspects of the mountain and are able to incorporate which are the best routes to take the next time. This is the same principle that applies to the Gestalt principle and starts with that basic building block and foundation where you build around can be applied in learning it from the foundation that we're starting and working around it to see what we are missing and then basically what is required and what is essential. So you get an idea of where you're going and you're able to grasp everything that goes on within that martial arts system. And getting to the peak both sides will manage a mastery. However it can take much more time to go straight up the mountain sometimes than it does to go around in an angular vector. Now let's take this chart off for a bit and understand what our base style is. Now many of these base styles or other, or other items that we're going to talk here are, can interchangeably be used and actually broken down into some sort of theoretical assertion. So if you're like in Judo, Jiu Jitsu or, or some other style, you can move these around as you see fit to help you decide what you need to do for your training. Let's just start this basic chart up and start off with basically stand-up type of martial arts. You're talking Karate, Kung Fu, Taekwondo, uh, boxing, etc. And whatever base style we have, we have levels to go up and that's represented by the lines and dots you see going down towards that center red dot. That center red dot of course is meaning the mastery of the martial arts. And that was the center point for where the circles met that we used a few minutes ago. Now each of these points will basically represent black belt levels. When we begin our studies we may only have concepts that might have that we might only have ideas about for training or or self-defense and do not have the real experience to make the proper suppositions which can be an ignorance and a weakness in our system that we can box ourselves into. Then comes the point when we see that certain aspects of our training are needed to fill in these gaps and weaknesses in order to progress any further or get through something like our techniques or a concept or idea that's kind of foreign to our system. Some styles will say, oh we don't have any weaknesses, we're a full martial arts program. Well that's not really true. 
all, all styles have weaknesses and something has been taken out of them in the past 70 years. In the 1940s, karate took out a lot of the self-defense and jiu-jitsu applications and then focused on creating a sport and these sporting aspects were mostly focused on making money for them. The problem was things got lost in the process and sometimes only a few students ever got to see what real martial arts were. Now when you talk to people about this, especially martial artists, they have one big problem and that is keeping objectivity and in many ways they can give new meaning to subjectivity. I mean how many times have you been to a tournament and you've seen somebody do a caught a great and a couple referees are like oh I don't know what's going on there. It's all because they don't understand or it's the subjective nature of what they know and they're trying to apply it to what they see. It doesn't always work. Let us establish first the foundation that we're starting as our base style. That will lead us to the conclusion of what we might be missing in our system. In this case, since we're using a stand-up, often judo, jiu-jitsu, BJJ, etc. comes out to be what is missing in that system. So these missing items will help build on these weaknesses we have and these gaps we need to fill in. Once we figured out what we are missing, then we have to figure out what is required to see what we are going to do to, to help us improve on both martial arts systems that we are working with presently, because not all karate or jiu-jitsu or kung fu is the same. And in this instance, we would probably incorporate something like Aki, Tai Chi, Circular Jiu Jitsu, uh, many of the different Chinese arts or, or Okinawan Goju, some of the softer types of styles. This should build on our foundation and our missing to help us really learn how to touch and, and focus on the little things. And this is what we call required because it is necessary for both that foundation and what is missing. Once we have the parameters for what is required, then we have to do what is essential. In this case, it will most likely be kombudo, uh, kendo, fencing, firearms, etc. to understand how to handle weapons in our system. That's not to say most of our styles don't already have some way of handling weapons, but this is to help build better knowledge and understanding of things that aren't always in your system. Classical weapons are okay, but this is a modern day system and we have to make sure we're up on modern day weapons. There are also many other things you might change or need to help bring this essentials into your system to help you improve. Remember, you're trying to create this style for yourself, for you as a fighter. So now we have a base chart built here. So we'll remove these circles for better visibility at this time and talk first about the arc of getting to what is missing. We will start using the Gestalt principle at this point. When you're starting in your foundation, you go to those systems that you're missing. I would suggest you be between your first and second degree black belt before you start going in there. The reason behind this is it will give you a better understanding of your basic techniques and the possible combinations or the weaknesses in your martial arts area. This is not to say you can't train at the same time when you start this missing system, but having this base system and continuing it will get you there much faster on what you know. Our mission here is to fill in what is missing. One should not assume that we have all the answers, but seek it out within that system. Do not use prejudice or prejudgment or this mission will fail when you're trying to do this missing system. Remember, this missing system is to find the questions and answers to your style. You must keep the prejudice of that system out of your mind as much as possible when you're training. After you've spent a little bit of time in the missing systems, it's time to start thinking about what is required in your system. At this point we actually start our education and begin to integrate all of the things into our system. Once we have started this integration process and gone through it a little while, then it's time to do some essential training. Now essential training may be on a different loop here. You may have find that you're doing the other two or three items and an essential training might pop up. It's still a good idea to take it. You don't always have to follow that part just because you haven't hit the essentials. It's always nice to find things to learn even before you get to that stage. Make sure you keep notes and practice what is told there, but try to keep your mind open when doing it. You are probably thinking it's going to take a lot more time. Yes, it will take some time, but because the foundation you have and the other systems for coordination, timing, distance, reaction, as well as other physical abilities in your system, this should allow you to excel quickly in these new systems. So this training should only take a few more hours out of your week. And if a person can do more or spare that time, 
great, but you should not deviate from your foundation system. These systems that you're training, whether you're ranking them or not, use them as a reference model to add to what you already know. You'll be amazed at the bunkai you will be able to pull from your forms if you do forms, and little things you've seen other people do, and you'll be going, oh, that's how that works, or I never realized how this would go. It's really amazing when that happens. As we continue on with the circle, through the processes, you will further revisit each of these systems as you go up in rank. This will actually let you get to the mastery of your system much faster without having to go in that straight line and climbing a steep peak that you're going to have to figure out on your own. It will also allow you not to have to figure out the basic and advanced details in the direction you need to integrate your fighting style. This integration of your systems is your foundation will build upon everything you've been trying to master in the martial arts. If your mind is closed in a basic classical style, you will not see it as necessary. But if you consider in the modern day's principles of self-defense, we are not doing classical martial arts anymore. As I mentioned earlier, even training in the use of weapons today should not be all classical. You need to have handgun retention, you need to have knives, you need to understand clubs. You need to know whatever is being thrown at you. Now one thing I see a lot is people think, well my original instructors would not like us getting out of our traditional styles because they had everything we needed right in there. Let me read what Gichin Funakoshi said in one of his books. There's no place in contemporary karate for different schools. Some instructors I know claim to have invented a new and unusual kata and so they aggregate themselves the right to be called the founder of a schools. Indeed, I have heard myself and my colleagues referred to as the Shotokan school, but I strongly object to this attempt at classification. My belief is that all these schools should be amalgamated into one so that karate may orderly progress into man's future. How very Bruce Lee like in his philosophy was he thinking there? I mean, there's a lot of people who will argue that point out there, but, but think about that. When you read Fonokoshi's books, he always talked about how karate needed to evolve. I know a lot of people quote Bruce Lee, but everybody's heard him say in an interview, don't get set into one form. Adapt it. Build it on your own and let it grow. Be like water. This is showing to me that he continued to build off his base foundation to create his own fighting style and then to correct basically the problems with his fighting styles and the martial art, classical martial arts he was using. I find it sad today that so many people try to imitate him instead of trying to live like he did when they're trying to learn their martial arts. I think he would shake his head in disgust at the stylized system of his philosophy today. Lee and Funakoshi both taught that creating a school or a style was incorrect and saw the importance of uniting the martial arts. I do think that the world is changing in that way, that most people are trying to become better martial artists. But it still has a way to go with people still saying, oh, BJJ is the best, karate is the best, and so on. They have to break this mold. It is often the pretentious nature of classical martial arts to say you must dedicate your whole life to that one style. Now, dedication to your foundation system is important. However, if a blind eye is kept on the fact of what is not in your system, then you'll truly never master the martial arts and you'll be thinking in the box the whole time. I really do believe a person will and can spend a lifetime learning to master the martial arts or many other things as far as that goes, like in piano playing, to you name it. But the essence of it is to learn and be better understand what is necessary to grow. In our present day, we have access to so much information that we can build on, but people are still blind today. As I said, don't claim karate is the best. Don't claim MMA is the best. Don't claim jiu-jitsu is the best. The real situation is that most people are blinded to the fighting styles or techniques or the fighters that they enjoy to watch so much on TV and, and are, are brainwashed into believing are, are the greatest thing. If they truly studied their fighters that they were liking in these MMA or Jiu Jitsu worlds, they would understand that even these guys will go out and try to improve themselves by learning other styles and martial arts. And they have a base foundation usually to start with, whether it be boxing, karate, Jiu Jitsu, wrestling. Some people are just out there because it can take a blow, but hey, those are that's a different story. 
We will talk about cross-training some more in the future, but I wanted to make sure you had some theories and understood the process of how you could look at it when you need to cr start cross-training. Well, I hope this video has been of some help to you, and if you liked it, please press like down there and share it with the friends. There might be some other people out there who want to cross-train and would like a good direction or general direction to go. And if you're here for the first time at Shihan's Dojo, jab that subscribe button and punch that bell so we can notify you when we have a new video coming out. Leave a comment down there. Tell me what you want to know about cross-training that I might be able to answer, and if not, I'll try to help you find the answers. So I hope you've enjoyed cross-training, and thank you for your valuable time. We'll see you again here at Shihan's Dojo.